Good morning, everyone. Please turn to hymn number two, Glory to His Name, hymn two, all four stanzas. <clears throat> Ready? Down at the cross where my Savior died, down where from cleansing from sin I cried, there to my heart was the blood applied. Glory to his name. Glory to his name. Glory to his name. There to my heart was the blood applied. Glory to his name. I am so wondrously saved from sin. Jesus so sweetly abides within. There at the cross where he took me in. Glory to his name. Glory to his name. Glory to his name. There to my heart was the blood applied. Glory to his name. O oh, precious fountain so saved from sin. I am so glad I have entered in. There Jesus saves me and keeps me clean. Glory to his name. Glory to his name. Glory to his name. There to my heart was the blood applied. Glory to his name. Come to this fountain so rich and sweet. Cast thy poor soul at the Savior's feet. Plunge in today and be made complete. Glory to his name. Glory to his name. Glory to his name. There to my heart was the blood applied. Glory to his name. All right, thank you. Good morning. Uh, Genesis 43. Let's see. Hey, Will, is there a tape? Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. All right, Genesis 43, although it might be a little while until we actually get started. Got so many things to talk about. Um, so that might be a little while. Or, you know, maybe we'll just start off with reading the Bible. So I Get that out of the way in case we don't get that far. Genesis 43. How about starting with verse number 19? Genesis 43, 19 until the very end. Verse 34. <clears throat> okay, I may not cover it all. I may cover very little. I'm not, I might not cover any of it, but we'll see how it goes. So at least we got the Bible done. So Genesis 43, 19. If you're able and willing to, let's have a stand for the reading of God's word. Genesis 43. I'll read verse 19, you read verse 20, I'll read the odd verses after that, and you read the even verses after that of Genesis 43, starting with verse 19. And they came near to the steward of Joseph's house, and they communed with him at the door of the house. <coughs> and it came to pass, when we were come to the inn, that we opened our sacks, and behold, every man's money was in the mouth of his sack, and money in full weight, and we have brought it again in our hand. And he said, Peace be to you, fear not. Your God and the God of your father hath given you treasure in your sacks. I had your money, and he brought Simeon out unto them. And they made ready the present against Joseph came at noon, for they heard, heard that they should eat bread there. And he asked them of their welfare and said, Is your father well, the old man of whom he spake? Is he yet alive? And he lifted up his eyes and saw his brother Benjamin, his mother's son, and said, Is this your younger brother of whom ye spake unto me? And he said, God be gracious unto thee, my son.
And he washed his face and went out and refrained himself and said, Set on bread. And they sat before him, the firstborn according to his birthright and the youngest according to his youth. And the men marveled one at another. Thank you. You may be seated. May God bless the reading of his holy word. <clears throat> Start with a word of prayer. Father, we thank you for uh, this Thanksgiving season. Uh, thank you for today, for Chinese school, for the one we already got saved today. And uh, pray for good testimony time next Sunday and that you're working in all of our lives and we're looking forward to all the things that you can do for us. So thank you for the Thanksgiving season, Christmas season. We would honor and glorify thee. We thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. All right. So um, this is one of the days where I'm going to digress completely and I might not even get any of the message in. So if that's the case, at least we read the Bible already. Right. <clears throat> so we thank you for that. Uh, yes, that's right. That is the Bible that we're talking about. Um, next week is Thanksgiving testimony. We'll give all of you a chance to say something. Um, uh, Arlene, I think, that this morning, thank you for giving Psalm 107.1. Oh, give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good, for his mercy endureth forever. We talked about it last week, and we want to share some of that with you. Um, so <clears throat> some things, this is really off the topic, but uh, some current events. Did, you, did any of you actually know that Kamala Harris was president of the United States for a little time? Uh, just any, anybody know that? Anybody? The first time in the history of the uh, United States that we had a woman president, Kamala Harris was president for maybe about two hours. Anybody know? Anybody knew that? No? Okay, Sean knows. You guys know current events? Okay, we have actually had Kamala Harris as president for a while. Okay, it's in the Constitution. Um, uh, president Biden went for a colonoscopy. I know all about it. <laughs> I've had six, and he, you, know, he, you have to go under the weather for a while. And so while you're under the weather, there needs to be a president. So by the secession of order, if the president is incapacitated for while he's taking a colonoscopy, then the vice president becomes president. So we actually have had a woman president uh, only a couple of hours, and she's no longer president again. So President Biden is back in. So, <clears throat> hey, we are your full service church here at Chinese Bible Church, right? So we have actually, for the first time in our nation's history, had a woman president for a couple of hours, I think. Kamala Harris was president, and now she's back to vice president again. So that's that. Okay. I want to hear more of your testimonies. <clears throat> um, okay. More things about myself. I digress. Uh, by the way, yeah, this last week, the calendar turned. I am now older than before. I'm now 64. I always announce my birthday after it happens to make sure you guys don't give me anything. Okay, so, so I just turned 64. So I thank God for all of that. Um, you are never obligated to get me anything. If you just pray for me, that's you know, good. Uh, some of you give me presents, and I thank you for that anyway, but you don't have to. You don't feel obligated to give me a birthday present, a Christmas present, all that. If you just pray for me, that is fine. But 64 is kind of old, right? I mean, I'm, I'm older than some of your parents, okay? And I'm old enough for a lot of uh, the kids to be a grandparent, right? So that's that. <clears throat> okay, something else that I refuse to get me down, but some of you heard me say I had three negatives in the year 2021, right? Okay, and just to see if anybody was paying attention, let me see, I'll pick on some of you. What were, what's one of the negatives that happened to me in 2021? So let me see. Uh, Amy, do you remember what was one of the negatives that happened to me in 2021? Sorry? My bike was stolen. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, you got it. That was one. Uh, let's see. Justin, do you remember another? My dad passed away, right? Uh-huh. And let's see. One more. Sammy, do you remember another? Car got broken into. Yeah. Uh-huh. So three negatives. There's just a fourth. Okay. A fourth one. And I don't know if it's happened to you. Any of you ever been a victim of identity fraud? Where, any fraud? Okay, no fun. $1,900 got drained from my account. Somebody took out $1,900. Um, you ever lose $1,900? Okay. Now, this one, I think, um, isn't, I mean, okay. Bike got stolen. Never got it back. Um, car got broken into, and you know, had to replace it. And of course, I'm not getting my dad back. But uh, this one isn't so bad. I think I'm actually going to get my money back because you report the fraud and all that stuff and they can, you know, get you back. I'm getting a replacement card and all that kind of stuff. So I think I can get my $1,900 back. But any of you feel like losing $1,900? Okay. All right. So uh, four negatives. 
Okay, and guess, guess what is my attitude about all that? And I'm not saying I'm spiritual or any of that, but think about if any of those things happen to you guys, right? Or maybe it has happened to you. You guys ever you know, lose a bike or um, we've all maybe had some relatives pass away and um, car got broken into. I know identity fraud, I lost $1,900, right? And my attitude is, well, give thanks to the Lord for he is good, for his mercy endureth forever. Say, that's not the attitude you're supposed to have. You're supposed to get mad and angry at God and all that. No, that's not the way it is, okay? You, you stop and realize um, what the Bible says. All of these things are temporary. Um, Jesus himself said, lay not up for ourselves treasures upon earth where moth and rust doth corrupt and where thieves break through and stew, which is exactly what's happening now, right? I was, I guess uh, three of those are thievery. thievery. Thieving? Is that a word? Thieving? Is that a word? Thieving? Thievery? Okay. So thievery of my car, thievery of my bike, and thievery of my bank account. Okay. But uh, when we get to heaven, don't have to worry about any of that stuff. Okay. <clears throat> and uh, yesterday I went to, as I, some of you heard, a funeral of one of my friends. He's actually younger than me, and I don't think any of you can remember too much about this, but this friend, uh, I just thought about, it. he actually helped us at Chinese Bible Church uh, way back many, many years ago when we were meeting at the Y. He helped us for big days for Halloween party and Christmas party and all that stuff, so he was really helpful. But uh, he's in heaven now. He's not worrying about all that. And when I get to heaven, you know, these four negatives, well, the year's not even over. <laughs> I don't know if I'm going to have a fifth, but uh, I'm not worried about it, okay? I will look back. A million years from now and say, you know, all of that was not a problem, not an issue at all. And so, um, so yeah, next week we want to hear from you and say what God has done for you. So we can say, oh, give thanks unto the Lord for he is good, for his mercy endureth forever, right? So that will be next Sunday where you get a chance to uh, say what God has done for you in the year 2021. And we're looking forward to that. Okay, so let's get back to where we were. We're actually going to uh, go back to the Bible some, right? Okay, so speaking of Joseph again, so a little bit of a repetition back in verse number uh, 19. Now, the Ark commanded this to you, take your wagons out of the land. Uh, I'm in the wrong chapter. I wonder that didn't make any sense. They came near to the steward of Joseph's house. They communed with him at the door of the house and said, Oh, sir, we came indeed at the first to buy food. And it came to pass when we came to the inn, we opened our sacks. And behold, every man's money was in the mouth of his sack, our money in full weight, and we have brought it again in our land. All right, so remember the first time uh, the brothers came to Joseph to get provender food and all that. And then when they went back, all the money was already in their sack. Okay, so um, uh, Gibson, is it correct to say that Joseph put the money in the brother's sack? Yes. yes, that's correct. And Kylie, is it correct to say that God allowed them to have the money in their sack also? Yes, that's correct. Okay, so both are correct to say that you know, we did such and such, but God did so and so, as I said before. So uh, when you go to the doctor, okay, when you go to the doctor, you can pray to God. Okay, it's okay to thank the doctor. It's okay to thank God also. I think both are appropriate, all right? So, you know, the doctor's there, and God uses doctors. It, usually God uses doctors. And you say, what about, you know, miraculous healing and all that stuff. God can still miraculously heal, but remember, just by very definition of miracle, miracle means it doesn't happen that much. Okay? We read in the Bible accounts of, oh yeah, wonderful, Jesus raising someone from the dead and healing the sick and casting out devils and all that. That was very strange, unusual. It was not a regular occurrence. Now, it might be a regular occurrence for Jesus, but it didn't happen every day. Okay? I mean, if you really want to go back in Jesus' life, for the first 30 years of his life, most likely, Jesus did not do any miracle. Not until, you know, when he started his ministry for those three years did we see those miracles, <clears throat> all right? So there's nothing wrong with medicine, all right? There's nothing wrong with doing the proper thing, okay? I will say that, you know, there's some people today that even call themselves Christians that will say, oh, I don't have to go to the doctor. I'll just pray, you know, God will heal me uh, and you know, don't ever go to the doctor, okay? Folks, that's presuming on God. You're presuming that God will heal you miraculously. When you know, God has already given us doctors and so forth, there's nothing wrong with going to the doctor, going to the dentist. You know, you can't just say, oh, I will pray that God will heal me. Um, no, you can go to the doctor and pray that God heals you, right? So when you go to the doctor, you go to the dentist, it's okay to say, thank you, doctor. Thank you, dentist. Um, but you can still say thank you to God also. So both are uh, proper. So we see this account of uh, Joseph doing that for his brothers. Okay, so second time the brothers are coming, they give double the amount. 
right? Uh, the money that we should have given to you uh, the first time to Joseph. They didn't know it was Joseph at the time. But still, the idea that, hey, maybe this guy's going to be mad at us, right? Uh, what happened to the money? Um, where did the money go? So we will bring the second time this money from the previous time and uh, for the new time. So they're bringing double the amount to just cover their backs, as it were. So verse uh, 21, it came to pass and we came to the end and we opened our sacks. Behold, every man's money was in the mouth of his sack. Our money in full weight and we have brought it again in our hand. And other money have we brought down in our hand to buy food. We cannot tell who put our money in our sacks. And of course, Joseph did it. He knows what's going on. <clears throat> and verse 23, and he said, Joseph said, and all this time I'm wondering how Joseph is doing this. You know, He's really putting up a front. Uh, he's hiding from his brothers, of course pretending that he doesn't know what's going on. But remember, the situation is completely turned. Uh, he was at the bottom of the barrel of the 12 brothers at first, right? The brothers are treating him badly. You know, we don't like you. You got the coat of many colors. Uh, we'll drag you into a pit. We hate you or we'll sell you to Egypt. Okay, now the tables are completely turned where Joseph is superior and the brothers are in the inferior position, right? And verse 23, and Joseph said, peace be to you, fear not, your God and the God of your fathers have given you treasure in your sacks. I had your money. And he brought Simeon out unto them. Remember, Simeon was back in jail at this time. So again, both those statements, I think, are true. We could say Joseph provided, but we can still say God provided. Both are e equally okay to say. <clears throat> and uh, verse 25, And they made ready the present against Joseph came at noon, for they heard that they should eat bread there. And when Joseph came home, they brought him the present which was in the hand into the house and bowed themselves to him in the earth. So we see that again, right? Joseph had that dream, right? You guys are all going to bow down before me. He said, you're nuts. You're crazy, Joseph. That isn't going to happen. Here it is. It happens, right? So what does that tell me? The word of God is correct. The word of God is sure. Uh, this is the book of God. It's the word of God. There's no other book, the so-called religious book that can claim that. Okay, the word of God is true. So Joseph says, you guys are going to bow down before me. You know, oh, we're never going to bow down before you. And what happens in this verse? They bow down before him. It happens exactly as the word of God says it will. Um, there's some events in the Bible that haven't happened yet, such as the rapture. Uh, Jesus is coming again. Okay, you say, that is so crazy. That's so fantastic. And how can that possibly happen? We believe it. The word of God says so. We go by the authority of the word of God. There are enough things in the Bible that have already come to pass that we can stand for, uh, stand true on things in the future, such as the rapture and uh, heaven for saved and hell for unsaved, unfortunately. So that's the reason why we want to get as many people saved as possible. Right? And so now Joseph is meeting with his brothers and he prepares a meal for them. <clears throat> and I can imagine how the brothers must feel. Um, I don't know if you've ever been in this situation, but uh, Joseph goes up to his brother and say, oh, you guys come with me to a, a meal. Okay, well, that kind of seems like it might be a good thing, but <laughs> they don't really know what's going on. They're still scared, right? Um, the analogy I can give maybe is, any of you ever, when you were in school, you ever have to go to the principal's office and you didn't really know what it's all about? Okay. How many of you in your history of your schooling ever had to go to the principal's office? Raise your hand. Anybody had that? Okay. All right, put your hands down. Okay. And the thing I hated the most is you don't know what it's for. I wish they could tell, you know, like when you email, you know, subject, right? What is the subject? Why am I coming? Right? So if they tell you ahead of time, you can kind of prepare, right? But you say, oh, you know, principal wants to see me. Your immediate reaction is, what's going on, right? What did I do? <clears throat> um, uh, what's going on? I remember you know, for myself, that happened to me. I had to go to principal, but I know what I did. Okay. Uh, I had, any of you know those old fashioned lunch boxes? Right? You, those lunch boxes? Anybody know that? They were, they were metal. Okay. So I took one of this guy was bothering me. So I used that uh, lunch box and hit the guy on the head. Okay. All right. So, okay. He deserved it. Okay. Yeah. You know, of course I was going to say that. But, uh, you know, he was just punching me and all this stuff. And I, I got this. You know, it was a big deal at the time, this lunchbox, right? I think it was the Flintstones or the Jetsons or something like that. You know, you, you got to have some theme on it, right? So he kept bothering me, so I got my lunch pail and hit him on the head, okay? So I had to go to the principal and all that, but I kind of knew what it was about. But, it, yeah, uh, I still think it was his fault because, you know, I wasn't going to do it. You know, I'm not the kind of person that if he wasn't going to do anything, I wasn't going to do anything to him, right? But he kept pushing me and all this stuff, so I said, you know, I've had enough, so I knocked him in the head, okay? So in Melvin Hum's opinion, he deserved it, right? Okay, although you may disagree with that. <laughs> but that's what it's like. So the brothers say, hey, what's going on? You know, what are we doing over here? I guess in today's analogy, 
Um, you get called in by your supervisor at work, right? So you have to go to your supervisor and they don't tell you ahead of time what it's for. Okay. Oh, boss wants to see me. Oh, what does boss want to see me for, right? Okay, am I gonna you know, moved up? Am I going to move down? Uh, I'm going to get a raise. I'm going to lose money. I'm going to get fired, right? Okay. You ever have to do that? Okay. And I hate it when they don't tell you ahead of time what it's for. <clears throat> okay. And, you know, just a couple of weeks ago, my supervisor um, had to tell me, you know, something and said, you know, Melvin, t uh, such and such, uh, talk to me. Okay. And they don't tell me what it's about. Right. So, <clears throat> you know, this, I knew it wasn't about firing. I mean, I do have this nice thing, I guess, about teaching is you can't just get fired like that on the spot. There's this process and all that stuff. So I knew I was secure about that. But you never know, right? But do you ever have a situation where your superior comes in, you know, the principal, what is it about? What's, what's going on here? So that's what the brothers are probably feeling. What is he coming, uh, what is he bothering us about? Remember, they don't know that it's Joseph. They're wondering what is going on here. But, they, but at least there's this meal. There's this meal for them, so... That's kind of nice. All right, so when Joseph came home, they brought him the present, which was in the hand, and they bowed themselves to the earth. And he asked of their welfare and said, Is your father well, the old man of whom you spake? Is he yet alive? Okay, and notice the language. He has to be very careful, right? Yes, uh, is my father? Oh, 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 no, I mean, I mean, I mean, is it your father, right? Can you imagine me? He says, Is dad, is my dad? You know, he's still playing the game, right? Okay, so it says, Is your father alive? Of course he knows it's his own father, but he's he's got to pretend. So he, he can't do that slip, right? Uh, uh, is is dad, oh, I mean, I mean, is your dad alive? So he has to play that game, right? You ever do that where you're pretending to be somebody else? Okay. So he wants to know, is dad alive? And they say, oh yeah, that servant our father is in good health. He is yet alive. Okay, so he's relieved about that. And once again, verse 28, they bow down, you know, so said, we're never going to bow down to you. Verse 28, they did it again. They bowed down and made obeisance, just as in a dream, just as the Bible says. The Bible is the word of God. And he lifted up his eyes. And I can imagine Joseph. Joseph probably thinks back to his dreams. You know, I remember that you guys are never going to bow down to me. What happens? They bow down, right? So, um, and Benjamin, right? Is this your younger brother of whom you speak unto me? God be gracious unto thee, my son. So, of course, he, he likes Benjamin the most. He's the only full brother, right? So, the only two that were born of uh, Rachel or Joseph and Benjamin, right? Remember, there are four women of the 12 involved of the tribe of, of Israel, okay? Uh, and Joseph made haste for his bowels, did yearn upon his brother, for he sought where to weep, and he entered in his chamber and wept there. So Joseph has to run away. He's about to cry. He's about to weep for his brother, but he can't show that, so he runs away, you know, hides somewhere. Brothers don't know what's going on. Behind the scenes, he's probably weeping for his uh, full brother, the only one full brother. The others are half-brothers. Right, and so he has to put on this front. Right, he washes his face, uh, go out and frame and set on bread. Okay, so he sets on bread. The brothers are there. Can you imagine the scenario? They're all sitting there. Why is Joseph calling us in for this meal? <clears throat> right, and they're all wondering what's going on. Okay, and then we have this strange conclusion uh, in verse thirty-four, and he took and sent messes unto them from before. <clears throat> okay, by the way, mess can be uh, meaning for food. Okay, uh, sometimes uh, you hear the expression that we're going to the mess hall, right? You ever heard of the expression mess hall? That's where you eat. And when you eat, it sometimes becomes a mess. So when you go to the mess hall, you're eating, right? So um, that's where the mess is. And interestingly enough, in verse 34, Benjamin gets more. In fact, a lot more. Okay, so uh, Eric, Eric, look at verse 34. How much more times does Benjamin get than everybody else of the brothers? Five times as much. Can you imagine that? Okay, so all the others, you know, Reuben, Simeon, Levi, Judah, all those guys get their food. And all of a sudden, he puts five times the amount just for Benjamin. Um, okay. I wonder if the brothers have thought, you know, what's going on here? You know, how come Benjamin's getting more? Uh, I don't know. Could you guys have figured out the mystery if you were back then? Say, why is Benjamin get? Could this actually be, you know, Joseph, the full brother of Benjamin? Uh, I'm guessing the brothers didn't think of it that way. And they, they're not thinking that that's a situation at all. <clears throat> But uh, Benjamin somehow gets five times as much. Um, and you said, Melvin, do you, do you think he should have done that? No, I don't think so. Okay, I mean, that's the exact same problem that uh, Israel, <clears throat> uh, Jacob, had in the first place with the 12 brothers, right? Treating um, Joseph better than everybody else. So Joseph himself is treating Benjamin better. better than he's the only full brother, I suppose. So like, you're my full brother. We got the same mother. So I like you better than all the others. And you can see, yeah, off the topic, but... You know, sometimes when you have 
these families nowadays with multiple marriages and divorces and you got half brothers and half sisters and all mixed up, you know, you don't, it, it's, it would be kind of hard to keep track of what's going on. Okay, one last thing I want to mention about uh, getting people saved and so on, and the language, it's that uh, Joseph provided and God also did provide. Okay, turn to 1 Corinthians 9.22. While you're turning there, about verbiage. So I've been getting off on uh, the doctor heals you, but God heals you also. Okay, uh, The teacher uh, gave me a good grade. I want to thank the teacher, but I want to thank God also that God is the one that helped me. 1 Corinthians 9.22, the reason why I'm saying that <clears throat> is, now, we witness to somebody, we get them saved, Okay, uh, and ultimately you might say, well, of course God is the one that saves. Jesus is the one that died on the cross. We know that. Okay, and we've actually had people say, you know, oh, we got so many saved. We got 8,000 saved in our ministry. We had somebody saved today. We had somebody saved last week and so on. And they say, Melvin, you should not use the language that you got people saved. Okay, what does it say in the Bible? We will use Bible terminology, right? First Corinthians 9, 22. The Apostle Paul says, to the weak I became as weak that I might gain the weak. And the Apostle Paul says, but what? I am made all things to all men that I might by all means save some. Notice that language? I save some. It is biblical to say we got somebody saved. Yes, you can use both. So you can say, yes, God got somebody saved. Ultimately, God gets somebody saved. But it is not uh, wrong to say we got somebody saved. So when we say we got you know, somebody saved today, we got 8,000 saved in our ministry. Say, so, Melvin, you should not use that language. No, that's biblical. It's biblical to say, we got somebody saved. That is scriptural. So that kind of goes along with this idea that, oh, Joseph, you know, gave him money. God gave him money, right? Uh, the doctor healed me, but God healed me. Uh, God got somebody saved. Yes, we got somebody saved too. We were partners in that, in getting people saved. So don't apologize for saying we got somebody saved. That is scriptural. That is in the Bible, as we can see here. All right, so we'll close with a word of prayer. Okay, Heavenly Father, we thank you for this Sunday before Thanksgiving, that we can honor and glorify you. Pray that uh, this Thanksgiving season we would give all the thanks to you, that we should, as it says in uh, Psalm 107.1, or oh, give thanks to the Lord. For you, God, he is good, for his mercy endureth forever. So we want to thank you for this in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, we'll break until 55. Remember, we're starting a little bit early. So 55, please. Okay.